I'd also like to start just by getting a little information about who you are. So um, once he starts rolling... I'm rolling, basically. I'm going to clap. Okay, give it a clap. I'm sorry to cut no, you off. No, that's fine. Oh, all right. Once we get started, I'll ask also um, each of you to take a turn talking a little bit about your background, where you grew up, things like that, and we'll go from there. I um, may shoot in tight with this camera. This camera's going to just remain stationary on all three of you at all times. Okay. We've got different angles here. And so we're just talking to you all the time, basically. Basically. Yes, okay. face her. Yep. Yeah. Face her. Uh, today is Saturday, September 16th, 2017. We are here with Liz Strong interviewing three incredibly attractive and intelligent people <laughs> who are about to introduce themselves. And here's the clap. So if you guys could just start by saying your full name in any order that you'd like to do. So we have that for the record. Renee Cheatham Hill. Greg Mays. Only Marie Ryland. Great. And as he already said, but I'll say it for my tape as well, um, it is Saturday the 16th. My name is Liz Strong. We are here doing an oral history interview for the New York Preservation Archive Projects, oral history project, Saving Preservation Stories. So um, I'll ask each of you just to start out, uh, tell me when and where you were born and a little bit about your life growing up. Well, I was born in Harlem. Um, I'm 67 years old. And uh, I, my, my life growing up, uh, it, it actually started in a family home. Um, so I was there for four years and then I was adopted. So the family that I've lived with for all my life, um, my adopted parents, uh, all named, my mother's first name gave me her first name. My father, Howard, uh, I took over his carpentry skills. I, I, I learned those things from him um, as a child. And uh, I've used them in my current day life. Uh, just for my pleasure. Sure, yes. <laughs> now wait, how old did you say you are? <laughs> yes, I am, sir. <laughs> I'm 67. Okay, that's the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> Let's just state that for the record. Um, um, I don't know how shocking that is to you. <laughs> I know. Uh, ah, she looks great. My God. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, Wow, I learned more in two minutes about Marie than I have known uh, since I've known her, so that's pretty amazing. So, my name is Greg Mays. I was born uh, here in Jamaica, Queens, uh, at Jamaica Hospital uh, in 1962, so I am 54 years old. Um, and from there, I went to uh, St. Albans, which is where my parents are the home, uh, not far from here. I guess technically, Adelaide Park is St. Albans. It's kind of a carve out, if you will. Um, so let's see. I was born and raised here, went to school here until I guess high school, back when they were busing folks, so I was bused across town uh, to Bayside High School. And after that, I went to, what, college in Meg Rivers for a year, and then I went to college in D.C. to Howard, then I went to business school, and then at some point I came back here. Uh, so I've been back here in this neighborhood for uh, how many years? Uh, let's say, uh, let's 20 to 25 years. Let's go with that, about 20 years or so. And so. so I wasn't born here, but my father actually is from Harlem as well, and he moved from Harlem to right around the corner to 178th uh, place. So he, after, I guess in his early 20s or so, he became a resident of Adelaide Park, and then when he and my mother got married, they left Adelaide Park, and then they finally just sort of returned here I want to say in like 1990. So how long is that now? Um, about 30, almost 30 years they've been back here in Asley Park. And stuff. So that's it. Great. Hi, I'm Renee Cheatham Hill. Um, I was born Renee Cheatham uh, from Flushing, New York, uh, from a very tight knit community uh, in Flushing. Um, we call it the Ville. And um, I didn't want to move out of Flushing. And uh, I have a brother and a sister, Mark and Jill. And uh, my, my mother was a business owner. She had a daycare center. Um, and my father was an engineer for Grumman. And um, I went to Parsons Junior High School. Uh, I'm a Queens uh, native. So I went to uh, PS-124, uh, Parsons Junior High School, and Jamaica High School. And um, I went to Howard for college for a little while, had a lot of fun. Didn't finish there, came back and finished at York College. So um, most of my life I've been here. 
Um, and um, so I, when my sister and I bought a house in Flushing, I think I was 24. She was like 20 or something. And um, when I started, uh, when I was dating and stuff, uh, and I uh, just had a baby at Royal Walk, um, but uh, I decided it was too, too close for, the, for all of us, and she bought me out. She still has that house. And we were looking for a place here in um, Queens. I didn't want to move to the Jamaica area because I grew up in Flushing, and I was spoiled with how the, you know, the buses are so convenient, and um, I love my community. But um, we were visiting somebody, and they're like, oh, we, we've seen this beautiful house in uh, Addisley Park. And I knew Addisley Park because I knew James Brown lived here. So I'm like, well, let's look at it, even though I didn't want to move to Jamaica area. And um, we rode by, and it was absolutely beautiful. And he had said it had a winding driveway. It didn't really have a winding driveway, but uh, it was a nice long driveway. And um, I, we bid for it, and we kept on losing the bid. It was in foreclosure. And um, it took about a year and a half to finally get the house. People were bidding on it, but they couldn't get inside the house because uh, it was a foreclosure, and the guy inside didn't want to let anyone in to see it. So I told the bank I'll buy it, or we will buy it, uh, without going inside. And so that's how we bought that house and how it wound up in uh, Addisley Park, St. Albans area, Jamaica area. I would love to hear your story about coming to Addisley Park as well. Okay. Um, okay, this house um, was actually built by my uncle. Um, he was an architect. My aunt, Sarah, my, the love of my life, she was an artist. And um, so I, I have some of each of them in me. They're, they were my adopted uh, relatives, but they couldn't have been closer than blood. Um, so, so long story, but my aunt, uh, my uncle passed, my aunt was here alone, and some of her family um, didn't want her here, and there's a lot of uh, issues with them trying to get her out of this house. And I tried to fight for her to stay here. I went to court to fight for her to stay here. And um, when I got to court, they uh, had asked me, um, to my aunt, my aunt, um, does she want someone to take care of her person or does she want to take care of herself? And she said, I want to take care of myself. And then the judge found her unfit to take care of herself. And uh, there was actually someone present in the court um, with cash to pay buy wow. this house. We didn't know, um, and we had two sides of the family, a good side and a bad side. So the good side said to me, um, that's not, well, they said to the judge, it's not right. We should have had the right to make the purchase. And um, they, they asked if there was anyone present that wanted to buy the house. And, I, and they looked at me and I said, I'll buy it. My husband wasn't with me. And I said, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I said, okay. So the judge gave me 30 days to get a mortgage and get back. Um, and I called my husband as soon as I walked out the door and I said, honey, uh, what do you think about us buying this house, a house, and Sarah's house? And he says, buy it. So that was that. And to make a long story short, you know, we bought the house and we've been here 20 years. And um, in the house, I found the blueprint for the house. And that's why I created a replica of the house because I had the blueprint. Also, I had the skills that I learned from my father as a child. Um, not even knowing that I had the skill until he passed away. He passed away in 1989, and I hadn't picked up a hammer or a saw or anything until that point. And once I, you know, I, I started building, you know, after, shortly after his, his death. And I've been building and creating things out of wood um, as an artist uh, since then. Um, that's how I got this house. Yeah. I'm, just because you brought it up, I'd love to say a little bit more on the record about this beautiful model that you have made of your house. Because we all saw it before the interview started, but okay. for the record, no one will know what you're talking about. So <laughs> please elaborate. What inspired you to make it? What was the process okay. like? Okay, how, how it started. Uh, how my woodwork started in 1989 when my, fa my father passed away. I had uh, his tools and I had a collection of miniature furniture that I've had for years and years. I just had a passion for these little pieces of furniture. And I didn't have a place to put them, I had them in a box. So I was on a mission to find a container to put the furniture in. Um, I was actually looking for an antique curio because I like antiques also. And a girlfriend of mine, a very good dear friend of mine who's very, very creative, said to me, why don't you put them in a dollhouse? And I was like, a dollhouse? I don't want a dollhouse. I, I don't see me putting that stuff in a dollhouse. And then that idea was in my embedded in my brain and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. So I said, okay, let me go buy 
a kit. So I built a kit, put the kit together, looked inside, said, oh no, this isn't going to work. The ceilings are too low. The rooms are too small. It, you know, it, 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 the kitchen's too small. So I, I decided, well, let me go and see what I can do to fix this. So I went to the lumber yard, not even thinking, went to the lumber yard, bought the plywood, did my little draft of what I wanted, made my cuts, added to the house, raised the roof, expanded the house, and then it was done. So then I presented to my, I showed it to my girlfriend that, that, that gave me the idea. She said, wow, how did you, how did you do all of that? And then it dawned on me that I didn't know how I did it. And because at that point I didn't know that I had the skill that I learned from my father as a child. He taught me when I was five years old how to use those power tools because he was afraid of me going into the shop, you know, touching those tools, cutting my arms off. And so he made me a huge platform for the shop to stand on. He showed me how to use my goggles, my gloves, how to use the power tools. And, and I didn't realize I had that skill until he had passed away. So that's where it, where it really started from. Thank you. Wow, well, that's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question for all of you is just um, how did you come to know about the history of this area? Um, how did you learn about it? What did it mean to you once you began to learn about it? Well, I would say that um, <clears throat> I guess as I shared my father, actually when they left Harlem, he moved into a house around the corner from here. So. I just knew that it was a lovely home that my grandmother and my grandfather lived in, and it had a rather large backyard. So just coming over here as a young person, you just in, be in that backyard, it had a beautiful garden around the house. And it's funny because the home is lived in now by my cousin, uh, my uncle's daughter. And uh, so she still lives in the home, and the yard is even more spectacular than it was then because she has this tremendous green thumb, and she just loves to present a house beautifully and stuff. Uh, so that was my first introduction to just sort of the neighborhood, if you will. Um, and then other than that, I think, um, you know, like Marie said, I knew that James Brown uh, lived in the neighborhood in the very distinct house that's on Murdoch Avenue that's sort of like a stone house, if you will. Um, other than that, I knew they had beautiful houses. Uh, my mother, I guess after we had all just sort of left the house, my four brothers and I, um, we grew up in a just regular house that regular folks grew up in. Uh, there was no dining room, for example. And uh, she was someone who just sort of envisioned herself just sort of, you know, inviting people over and for dinner, if you will. So she's the one who actually just sort of uh, had the interest in moving uh, to this neighborhood. and. Um, the house that they live in now had been cut up and it was a rooming house at some point. Um, and my brother actually came in and did all of the renovation work. So it went from this pretty horribly, you know, abandoned house to a lovely home um, for my mother and father because there weren't a whole lot of kids around at that point and stuff. Um, and then after I became the president of the civic organization, that's when I really, really got a sense of uh, just sort of the historic, just sort of value of the um, neighborhood because we had two um, the historic districts council. They came in and they had done some research. And so just reading their research and then just meeting some of the neighbors who have lived here for God knows how long. What are the sisters' names oh. who live over on uh, on your block or yeah, something? Know. You know, they've been here since <laughs> the beginning of time. Um, so just meeting more of those people and getting a sense of just really the historic, uh, just sort of aspects of the neighborhood and stuff. What about you? Well, um, growing up, my, a lot of a lot of my family lived, you know, over here in St. Albans area, and um, like I said, I, we'd be riding down Linden Boulevard, and I'd get so excited every time I'd pass James Brown's house. I think he only lived there <laughs> a year or two, but everyone he had a little uh, a big fence, so you could hardly That's see right. it, but he had a moat. Yes. And. Um, <laughs> At one time, you could see the moat, and then a big fence. I think someone else bought it, and yeah. it was fence. But was we still open. thought right. maybe he's in there. Right. <laughs> but he didn't live in there that long, I don't think. Um, but that's that, that. Everyone knew James Brown's house as they rode down Linda Boulevard. And then, then I always had a passion to live in a, a large house. I grew up in a um, attached, semi-attached semi uh, house in Flushing, and. Um, I used to look outside my um, window in my bedroom in Flushing, and there was a church across the street. There is a church there. You know, we don't own that house anymore, but there was a church across the street. And uh, they had beautiful trees around this around. So I love trees, and I love um, land and stuff. So 
I remember crying one day when the neighbor didn't like cleaning up the leaves and she cut down all the trees. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I gotta live in a neighborhood where I can have a backyard and, and beautiful trees and stuff like that. So that's when, um, you know, after the, someone had told us about this house and, and um, it, it took so long to get it, you know, we were fighting to get this. I, I, I actually went to the bank and said, listen, no one's bought, bought it yet. What's the problem? That's how I, I, they said, well, no one wants to buy it without seeing the insides. And I said, no, I'll take it, because I saw the land that it came with. I saw all the houses around us have land. Um, just, they're just beautiful properties. And, um, and yours is a brick home, which is really unique. It's a Tudor. For the, yeah. um, you know, for the neighborhood. Yeah, it, yeah, you're right, because, well, it's, there are a lot of Tudors. Not like yours. <laughs> yours is the best. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, that's, that's, so I've, you know, as I, like, like Greg, as you live here, you find out, oh, Lena Horn lived over here, or so-and-so bought this house, and you see plaques around the neighborhood, and um, you really get to appreciate it. As soon as I came in, I joined the, the um, civic organization. And at that time, there were other people in charge um, of, you know, but they were, they were like, we need more young people like you to come. <laughs> and so I used to go regularly, and I used to, that's how I met Greg, and then I, I met Marie there. And, I don't know, there are probably a few more young ones like us, and I'm saying she's young too, because everyone used to think we were sisters. Like, oh, I saw you. I'm like, no, that, that was Marie. <laughs> you know, they, they thought we were related. Um, but um, we, we became close then. And so when the, uh, the older people started leaving, then we looked at Greg, and I think Marie was the pre vice president at that time or something. Mm -hmm. um, I was, yeah, for a little while. I was were president you the before. You, oh, you were the pre he was the vice president. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was a treasure. So I know but anyway, um, we, we, we all came together and we pushed Marie to do it first. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's how it all started. <laughs> exactly. That's how we met. And it's just from being around here, you get to learn the history from the elders. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they say, oh, this is, this is what happened here. And, you know, that's how we learned it. Yes, yes, yes. So it's kind of an oral history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But, you know, and, and when I was a child coming to see my aunt, this was the most beautiful place at Christmas time. I don't know if you remember, if you were here then, where there was um, people that would decorate their home so beautifully. I mean, they have dolls that moved and all kinds of things in the window. And I always felt like the, the rich people lived over here. You know, when you were a child, I mean, just because that's what it looked like. And I also thought my aunt and uncle were, you know, well off. <laughs> They weren't. They were just average people. But you know, um, my aunt was so elegant, and and my uncle was so proper. You know, I just felt that they had to be rich people. You know, but no, this now, was this so house beautiful. Is beautiful. Was this house as beautiful as it was uh, then as it is no, no, now? My or? uncle built the house, mm -hmm. and I have pictures in the hallway of the house when it was first built, mm -hmm. and it looks like this. Except you know, windows change, doors change. Mm -hmm. Well, I changed some things, but of course I we gutted my husband. And I gutted the whole inside of this house. Right, right, right. Uh, we gutted it. We did it. I painted every wall in this place. Um, you know, so we've torn the house apart completely, and you know, and so my replica that I created is when I when I um, renovate in here, I renovate inside of there too. <laughs> Look in there, you'll see. I got. I hope your camera can get it started. Why? Off, that. It started because off, she's Marie. It started off in pink. I made it pink when I first uh, when I first bought the house, and then I said, "Well, I don't like pink. I, I want gray." So I had to take the whole replica apart, go in there, repaint all the walls, <laughs> even upstairs. I, I, so I had to do all of that. And but every time I change anything, I change it. You know, I change a frame on a picture. I have to go inside, change the frame on a picture. And that's wow. what I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the wall sconces are the same in the Pretty house. Much. No, okay. as, as best as I can get them, you know. Yeah, it's so impressive. It is. It is. The gift. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Did you have projects to rework the house that you moved into once you got there? I mean, you haven't oh, seen oh. the interior. Oh, everyone's like, oh, you're gonna. All right, yeah, because it was a foreclosure. Yeah. Uh, it had uh, lots of people living in there, mm -hmm. and. Um, we found one person in the basement. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was while we were fixing the house up, which we still are fixing it up, um, and this is 20, 21 years, 22 years later, we're still fixing it up. Um, the guy in the basement, we said, uh, stay there, because we, we, we were still living um, at, at our other house in Flushing uh, that my sister and I owned. I, I said, while well, we fixed it up a little, because I just hadn't had a baby. and. Um, so we said stay there this way kind of protects the house and so he stayed there probably for a year 
We didn't know him. He had heavy, heavy, heavy Jamaican accent, so we could hardly understand him. <laughs> and um, but he watched over the house, and he kept it uh, kept it fine, and we trusted him, and he trusted us. And then finally, we got to a point where we were going to start moving in, and so we had to ask him to leave, mm -hmm. um, and he was fine with that. But um, that's uh, we're still fixing it up. I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, and my husband did a lot. But uh, because of we went through depression, not depression, but recession at one time and stuff like that. And I have my own business, and he has his own business. You know, we, we struggle here and there. So we we're, hopefully we'll fix it up before um, I, have, <laughs> I have grandchildren or something. I don't. Know. But um, my, my I have a 30 year old daughter and um, 30 sorry 31, and my son is 22. And then what happened was my mom see, and so we moved into this house, and everyone was like, "Oh, you're moving to this big house. You're all going to do great. You're going to fix it up beautifully." Well. That didn't happen, um, but the outside we try to make that look nice. Um, and my um, my daughter, everyone was like, "Oh, it's only four you all in this big house." So unfortunately, um, my mom had passed away in 2001. But before then, she had adopted uh, two kids, and they weren't family, but she adopted them. She loved kids. So when she died, I, I didn't want to put them back in the system, and I had the house. So I said, "I will take them." So they each had their own room. And everyone was happy, and um, so it wound up that even though I had a big house, you know, God, God gave it to me for a reason because I really, you know, needed to raise these kids, and um, that's so we're still fixing it up because we had a family unexpectedly come in, and I and you know I had to make sure that they go to school, so we were running around. We had a lot to do. We kept busy, but uh, that's our goal to fix it up. Um, you know, we're still working on it. And yeah. Renee's husband is a contractor yeah, also. Yeah, so you know so how the shoemakers, the shoes aren't <laughs> the same thing. It's like, I'll be the last one to get my house done. Can I interrupt for a second? Hold your thought. Uh, since we're going to have an audio document of this, I'm going to suggest that when you ask a question to a specific person, you start with their name, so whoever's transcribing this knows who's talking. Oh, no, that's fine. We'll figure that out later, okay. because okay. I, I take a look at the transcript, too, okay. so I'll be able oh, to... Do, don't, don't turn back on. I just remembered you said we're supposed to repeat the question. I just remembered that as well. I, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much, because um, <laughs> as he said, we might make something edited out of this later, but for the most part, what we're going to put online is the full video okay. so um, but again that's again, what that. he said is still true yeah, for something you want to do over <laughs> don't you're more than welcome <laughs> don't forget to, to, ask to do it or say it differently so oh. don't worry about it um, but so also, far it's been very clear yeah and also I love the way you guys have been playing off of each other as well so I really wouldn't worry about it too much Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> Are we back on again? <laughs> no, the reason why because I'm sweating over here. Oh. 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 I was like pouring down. You look great. <laughs> I tried to rub off of you a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Greg over here. <laughs> we can stop at any time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are on, and if yeah, you want to stop any time, you let us know. Okay, yeah, yeah don't on. worry about it. <laughs> well, um, one of the things that I, I wanted to ask you guys about is just. Um, Obviously, in addition to like coming and you know fixing up these homes and making a space, um, getting engaged with the community was something that was important to all of you, but also rare. Otherwise, people in the civic organization would have been like, "Oh, good young people." Mm -hmm. um, so, what was it about this community that made you want to be engaged? Um, were you just trying to reach out, make new friends, or was there something in particular that you found here that was unique that you wanted to be a part of? Me, I, I moved into the community. I wanted to know what was going on. You know, I knew about the historic. Um, what year was it that you moved in? Um, Sixty-seven. Okay. Um, we're not born. <laughs> Sorry, ninety-seven. Okay. My, when my grandson was born. Right, right. right. Um, February of ninety-seven. Okay. Because he was born in May. Um, yeah, so that's twenty years ago. And um, you know, just wanted to be involved. Um, I didn't know if I really wanted a big role in being involved, but I just wanted to see what was going on, what the community had to offer. And um, so I saw coming to the meetings, and I met Adrian Rogers, who was the, the president at the time. And anyway, um, her encouragement is why I became the, vi uh, became the vice president, mm -hmm. and also with her encouragement, I became the president. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that's really why. It's not, not because I want to make friends or anything, I just want to be involved with the community. And I just thought it was such a beautiful place, and I wanted to do whatever I could to help it stay that way. I agree. Um, 
I came, uh, we bought the house in 1995, and um, I agree. I just, I didn't, I wasn't going to make friends. Um, but we were, I was going to try to, to keep the, the trees and the, the beauty of the, <laughs> of the neighborhood. So the same thing that happened over in Flushing doesn't happen here. Um, because it's important, uh, just like Harlem, we, we were going to move to Harlem. We, have, uh, we own some brownstones in Harlem. And um, what happened was my daughter, it was I think around 1994 or something like that, um, she, we went to Harlem to look at the houses and everything and she heard the sirens going off all the time. She's like, I don't want to move here, mom. <laughs> so uh, we wound up having to look for something here. But we really weren't looking when we found this, uh, um, our friend Bill Jones, he's a realtor, uh, he said, I really see this beautiful house like I told you before. And, um, it has a beautiful long winding driveway and I want the house but I can't get it right now and I said well um, that's when we looked at it so he wanted it and then when I looked at it I'm like I want this too so <laughs> um, anyways so it I got involved um, I, I gotten involved because not because of friendship because I want to keep the beauty of the, of the place yeah was Bill living here already? Was no, he what happened was Bill, Bill, we got the house finally, and Bill told my husband, oh, I'm looking for a house in Asley Park too. Mm -hmm. And I happened to hear at, I think, one of the civic meetings that uh, someone was selling a house on the next block. Mm -hmm. And I said, Bill, I just heard that someone's selling, I know you want to get in the area. So he found me my house, and he I found, found him his. his. That's right, that's right. Okay. It's a nice house, also. Oh, yeah, it's right. a beautiful house. And it's yes. a brick house as well. Yes. And just, yes. um, it is interesting. Yes. Yes. So I'm trying to think how I got involved in the Civic. Um, the thing that I love about these ladies is that they're doers. Um, and you got to love a doer. <laughs> you know, people who just don't talk or just complain, but just sort of jump in and just sort of get the work done and stuff. So I think when I joined this, when I, the first Civic meeting, you were obviously there already, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and were you were you the treasurer? Um, yes, yes, I was. You were the treasurer. Okay, so mm -hmm. both of them. So you were the vice president. I was vice president. And you then, were the okay, and then Renee was the treasurer. And look, I just saw how attractive the leadership was, and I said, <laughs> you know what? I'd be a fool to not get in between these lovely ladies here. <laughs> I used to have long black hair like Renee. At the time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we all had black hair yeah. at that point, um, but it's all good. <laughs> That's why people looked and said, the young girl, not young, but young girl. Um, and I don't know, so the first thing that I did was I was working on the newsletter. That's right, you um, did a great job. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I just said, you know, people talk about how, oh, everybody doesn't come to the meetings and this and that. And I said, everybody can come to the meetings. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be, you know, communicating with folks who can't come to the meetings. They have kids, they have different points in their lives, et cetera, et cetera. So I started to do, restarted, or, you know, just sort of started to do a newsletter. And I did that newsletter for a couple of years. And then I took um, it from you. And then, okay, is that when you began? You, you dropped it on me. Oh, okay, I dropped it on you. <laughs> That's because I knew that you were so capable and able, and I was like, okay, here. Um, <laughs> So nonetheless, so this is the, the really fantastic thing. I mean, I just looked at Marie and it was time for the previous person to just sort of give up the position and she was the vice president and she does this little shy thing that is hilarious <laughs> because it has absolutely nothing to do with who she really is and stuff. So she was like, maybe it was the role or something like as the vice president is supposed to be seen and not heard or something like that. So she was a very effective vice president. But I looked at her and I was just like, well, clearly this woman needs to be the president right here. And I think it was kind of reluctant. She can correct me if I'm wrong. It was, it was. Okay, yeah, okay, was all right, all right. But I just said, she needs to be the president, you know? And I encouraged her. Apparently, Adrian encouraged you as well. Um, and next thing we know, she was elected and she was the president. And did a very, very fine job of just sort of being the president, you know? She was gracious and she was welcoming and all the things that she is today. And it was what the organization needed at that point. Yeah. Um, so it was fantastic and stuff. So I forgot the question that you asked, but that's basically <laughs> how, oh, that's right, how I came to the civic organization. And it was the beauty of my colleagues right here. Oh, that day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that your version of history as well? <laughs> I, I just, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember when he came, but 
I know when I came, you know, yeah. so, you know, like I said, in the beginning I was kind of reluctant, and then right. I just said, well, I'm not going to let anything or anyone stop me from being part of it. Right. So I just continued to come in and got to know everybody and, and learned that everyone wasn't as frightening as they seemed to be. <laughs> Because there was one character who was a little frightening, but we'll leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you nominated him, right? Of course, because he, he nominated me. <laughs> and, and there's no way you could get away from this, Mr. Mays. <laughs> That's right. Turnabout is indeed fair play. And she nominated me, and, and I don't and, think and, that I was going to nominate myself. <laughs> and he really does a great job, yeah, because, oh because he's a really, really, really good at the, you know, yeah. doing things. Just getting things done very quickly. <laughs> And always prepared, coming to the meetings, always prepared with so much information. So he did a great job as, as president. Well, thank you. Thank you. He it was a that. labor of love, you know. Mm -hmm. And I will say the only thing that I thought um, that I wanted to do, there was, to a certain extent, the civic organization meetings felt at times like high tea, <laughs> right? <laughs> And you know, and so both of these ladies, they just both said they didn't go there to make friends. And I, I guess I kind of felt the same way. I wasn't right. there to make enemies, right. but I certainly did not think that we needed to have high tea, you know, <laughs> once a month, you know, with the people of Addisley Park. <laughs> so I started to invite a guest speaker to every single meeting, you know, so that it would feel a little less like high tea mm -hmm. and a little more just sort of less, you know, what's useful and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what we can we do? to really just sort of um, encourage a sense of community where people just sort of knew each other and valued each other and then also just sort of help to maintain the value of our homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what... Um, but I want to step in here. I'm not sure when we decided, because I know we kind of got disappointed because uh, the, the elderly stopped walking over to the meetings. The meetings were yes. a few blocks, um, they were about 10 blocks away maybe. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I approached St. Albans congregation, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure who was present. I think it might have been was okay. yep, yep, yep. So I, I asked them, I said, can we please start holding our meetings here? It's, it's in the community, um, and they, everyone can walk if they need to. Mm -hmm. And they were so gracious yep. uh, to allow us, to this day, we're still there. Yep. So that helped a lot to maintain our Absolutely. meetings, because we started losing people. Um, we were a few blocks away, we started losing people towards some point and I asked Greg if it's all right if I go and he said it was fine yeah. so uh, we did that we did make that change because yeah. um, yeah. I think what it was was that I wasn't really quite sure why the meetings were they, outside of the neighborhood anyway. right. <laughs> you know and we had this beautiful family life center mm -hmm. part of St. Olden Congregational Church yes and I think I said to myself um, well you know what it might be, I'm on my way out, but I can ask, you know, on my way out um, if I were to damage the relationship, I wasn't going to be there. But I thought it really made sense for us to be over here. And then I think the very first meeting we had over here was it was when you were the president or something like that? Or? I don't know. Okay. But I know once we started having our meetings oh, here, yeah. the, the membership multiplied. Yep, I mean, yep, the yep. attendance multiplied. It's right. always full. That's right. I mean, that's what you want to see coming to a civic association meeting and yep. see people. And, um, you know, it's been great yes. ever since. Yes. Yes. Well, it went down a little when I became president. <laughs> <laughs> because this woman right here oh, ruled with an iron rules. fist. First, okay. she, she's just a little pickle. <laughs> Yes, yes, I yes, yes, yes. We're the same size. I don't do these nice, nice yes, and, yes, yes. And I don't do these nice newsletters like Greg. You know, you know, I do one funny. pagers. Because I think. Like, I if you know. don't come out, you, you know what? You're going to miss everything. Look, okay. I had right. some little slogan, and I don't think it's in no, one of these early <laughs> newsletters, but basically it said. Um, the Addisley Park is, you know, is here for you or something like that. Yes. And you immediately, yes, she changed. Renee changed it to the Addisley Park Civic Organization does not work for you. You, you, you work, work for, for us, us or something <laughs> like that or you work with you. We, we work and with you. you. And it was the perfect tone <laughs> change, you know. <laughs> and also, so at the time, we were fighting. The uh, there was about to be a... Uh, the, the VA hospital, which is across yes. the street, uh, which started out as a golf club way, way back in the day before the federal government took it over and changed it to its VA hospital. 
But at the time, during the transition, there was a developer, a local developer, who thought that they were going to redevelop that facility. And the, um, the plan said that they were going to build a, de a development that was going to be two-thirds the size of Rochdale Village, which is a fantastic but huge development about two miles from here. And it was like, no, you, no one is going to put two thirds the size of Rochdale Village over there. Without because jobs, we don't have jobs. And, and jobs. forget all of that, the traffic was going to be a nightmare. You know, yes. letting the traffic yes. over Lynn Boulevard. It's a nightmare now. We it's a nightmare now it. without it. And it yeah. would have just been, it was crazy. Yeah. So at the time, you know, we had been doing this kind of semi politeish kind of thing to fight it. And I remember yes. we went down to Washington, yes, D.C. We we I went with Greg. He was a leader. That's right. So we went down together. So long story short, at the end of my term, you know, it was time for Renee to just I had to take be it over president. Because I was the closest with mm. him, knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> uh, no, there was no choice. And I didn't really want to. I'm not. I'm not an outgoing person. I've become one. I've become even more of a public speaker because right. of Greg Forsen. <laughs> Forsen and now me. she's on the community oh board as the. What are you, treasurer? I'm the secretary. The secretary of the community board. So, but wait, she. That little issue with the development was getting really, really funky, and we needed somebody who was going to be a little less polite about, you know, what was going to happen there. It was too nice. Enter Renee, oh, and yes. it was just became <laughs> really, really clear how she articulated what all of us just sort of felt, but I was too whatever, too See, Presbyterian we, to, say. <laughs> to say. She said it all I, I, and made I it was quite called, clear. I was went to town hall meetings, and I was told, sit down, sit down, you don't know yes, what you're talking was. about. That's right. Sit down, you're disrespecting our elected officials. That's right. And I was told everything. That's that's right. And right. I worked my way right. into everyone loving me, right. and, and even to the elected officials, right. uh, they had no doing choice. what we asked them to do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Doing, you know, really just sort right of representing thing. our doing interests. Right that's right. That's right. Because we were picketing out there, you yeah. know, Every for... day. I lost weight. I, I gained weight. <laughs> I was picket some more. I was thin by the time that's we right. finished walking those, those streets. That's right. Because it was really just sort of a federal matter, and we were trying to fight. You know, it was the Veterans Administration. We had us. petitions. We had picketing and all of that. Good because stuff, they were going know. to lease the land that's right. for 50 or more years that's right. to a private developer who would just tear it down. And then, not only that, they didn't care about the veterans. No. So the veterans we were... Uh, we, we formed a, a community, we That's formed right. UCVCR, which That's is United right. Commu um, United Community, no, I forgot. <laughs> um, United, uh, United Community, um, UC, uh, V is Veterans, United, uh, right. sorry, United Coalition, Coalition of Veterans and Community Rights. That's right. Okay, That's right. sorry. <laughs> um, so that was, we formed the veterans and us mm -hmm. formed a, a bond. Alliance, yeah. And this is a little after Greg, mm -hmm. because Greg worked his butt off mm -hmm. trying to stop it. And then I guess he got so tired. He was there a lot of times mm -hmm. picketing, mm -hmm. but um, I guess I became the lead. Mm -hmm. And what happens when I started convincing the elected officials that they were doing the wrong thing, the first one that came on board was um, uh, Assemblyman Scarborough. Yes, he did. And mm -hmm. he came on board because his wife heard me. And she started <laughs> doing the research. That's she started right. looking up and saying, wait a minute, we don't have to do what the government says, right. they have to do what we ask, the right thing for our community. So with her on and, and me and so and Greg, mm -hmm. but we still use Greg's research and everything. Um, it was a big thing, but we, we turned it around where the, the, the government backed up. Yeah. And the assemblyman and, actually lived in Addisley Park, so he and his wife lived yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, yeah. it made sense for him to kind of be one of the earlier sort of allies. And then eventually, you know, the electeds <coughs> did what they were supposed to do, just sort of listen to the folks here. And, um, and we were we were um, named in Daily News like uh, whatever year that was. <laughs> Rabble rouser of the year. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, we were named like the best thing that happened in Queens okay, that year. All right, all right. I when we that. Uh, actually ended, it's called the EUL, the Veterans. E, uh, you can research it. It's called the right. VA EUL, yeah. Enhanced Use Lease Program. Yes, 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 yes. And that's yes. what they wanted to do over here. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And now, um, was this before or after you guys worked on the rezoning? No, I was instrumental in the rezoning. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was, was in my time. All, all across, right? So that was yeah. that goes for the so back. So what, what led up to that idea, and how did you how did you push that through? Well, we we found that you know, with our infrastructure being as weak as it was, we didn't want um, multiple units to come into the community. And for years and years, we had this map that showed the zoning of the area. 
but it really wasn't a clear map. And then I got a very clear map of the area, and I was able to show the community that the areas that they thought were not multiple zones really were. So I had to go to our councilman, and I showed him. I said, you know, we're fighting for the infrastructure, infrastructure on, on the other side of Addis Lake Park, but it's in our area also. So um, I, you know, I was on that um, uh, board, and I met with uh, the commissioner. I, I met with quite quite a few people, and uh, we were able to fight and have the areas that was zone R three two, which is the multiple uh, <coughs> unit to R two, and that means that you can't put any com uh, multiple units in our area. But that was under my um, under my watch that yep, that yep. happened. And it actually, I mean, it spanned. Uh, the three administrations because you started it. Actually finished. Um, no, she's talking about the zoning. That's the, not the. That, oh, the zone. I'm sorry. The yes, zone. yes, yes, the zoning. Right, yes, right yes. around the same time as when HTC reached out and to then, you. And then right? at the end of That's my right. term, then um, I we reach out to them actually. Okay. Um, I went through some uh, councilman Conry's That's office, right. Yep. And he uh, arranged for them to come in, and they came in as I was leaving. Right, right. Because it's interesting because before. Um, redid that work, everybody thought that Adelaide Park actually ended at Linden Boulevard. Right. And as a result, we found out that no, and it made sense because if you looked at the architecture, you know, there were a lot similar. of homes that were very similar mm -hmm. on the other side. And it really made sense because the only other thing past this kind of two block wide neighborhood that we previously thought was not Adelaide Park, the other side was the golf course. So it didn't make sense that it wasn't at some point, you know, part of Adelaide Park. And it's interesting because if you look down one of the avenues, it actually looks like Renee's house was like the, what did they call yeah, it? Yeah, the um, anchor, 115th Avenue. It looks like it was... That's right. The part, the, that was all one. That's right. So if you look down 115th Avenue and the golf course would have been right to the right, right of that, right. it looks like it her home is the clubhouse. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense because it's a beautiful, you know, just sort of in stature and the rest of that good stuff. So it started, you know, our relook at the boundaries of Adderley Park right. um, with Marie, right. and I guess you saw that. And then I do remember Comrie. Um, I didn't know whether he was responsible for bringing in the historic district yeah, council, or I, you had reached out. Yeah, I had reached out to him, and yes. he helped me bring them in because the community wanted it. Well, yes. they wanted it. They badly. wanted it. So. That's right. That's right. Um, that's right. So that they came in and they started their work. They started their work. They did a study, mm -hmm. um, and that study, it, I think it was, ended up being why we ended up being a historic district as quickly as we did, right. because the mm -hmm. landmark folks were able to use the historic district council folk right. 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 and the report that they had prepared to do a grant and all the rest of that good stuff. Um, but still, that landmarking process started, I guess, under you, right. um, and Very then <laughs> through you know my four years, and it didn't happen um, until right. uh, Renee was the president. Right. So, right. Right. so it was a, probably an eight-year process mm -hmm. uh, from start to finish. And yeah, stuff. but you, know, you became uh, close with the, the guys that did the research, Simeon and yes, Simeon Bankoff, and mm -hmm. what was my other guy's name um, from the Historic District Council. It's in here, isn't it? Um, um, we can yes, also add yeah. it in the transcript later. Oh yeah, look at you, Simeon Bankoff. That's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, yes, yes. So and they really came out and really got everybody excited because they they applied for a grant um, and they were able to send some folks in and to interview people and they did some great work, photographed yes, yeah. homes. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to really get people totally just sort of thrilled about it. And so it's funny, so this was my very first meeting in uh, the January 2006 meeting is when the folks from the Historic Districts Council came out. Right. Um, now, that wasn't that huge meeting that we had, right? Because remember the, that huge meeting where they, I think we were talking about, that may have been with the Landmarks folks when we were talking about what it meant. Yeah, that was Landmarks. What it, it would mean to here. make, you know, what a historic district. Yes, that was another because yeah, we were okay. close to right. it happening. That's at that right. Point. That's right. So that was a very interesting meeting yeah. because Somebody I had wanna... never yeah. seen that many folks at a meeting, yeah. and it was extraordinary. Right. Um, and that's when people were like, "Well, what's going to happen?" And and I remember we just wanted to be crystal clear. Okay, 
well, you need to understand what this means. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is nice and everything, but if we become a historic district and you want to paint your door red, um, you're going to essentially have to ask permission <laughs> to paint your door red. Um, so that was, it was very interesting to just sort of hear people right. respond to that and right. not get crazy. Yeah, yeah, and as a matter of fact, there was some, neg you know, some negative um, responses, yeah, which we didn't really expect. Mm -hmm. um, but what were what were you concerned? Uh, oh, that buses were going to be tour buses were going to be riding. We had yeah, that before. That's right. That's right. We always had that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we, did, we have. That's right. Matter of fact, I haven't seen as many since we've been landmarked, right, right, right. which is surprising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's funny because I remember, in particular, you know, as the president, people used to, and I'm sure you guys did the same thing. They they call you up at one o'clock in the morning and tell you about the parties that were happening. But they'd also call you up at, at, at midnight and tell you, well, so and so is, you know, is, I don't know, painting their door green or something like that, or, you know, how can we stop that? And, you know, it's like, well, you know, honestly, uh, we can't really legislate taste, so we can't stop that. So if they want to put, you know, paint their door green or do something ridiculous, then we can't stop it. And I had not thought about really just sort of the implications mm -hmm. of, you know, not the implication, but just sort of the positive effect of being a landmark community, because then you could absolutely say, well, you know, not that you want to report your neighbors, right. but you could say... You call them and let them do the dirty work. And, uh, right. Yes. And you, that's right. Or you that's could right. just say, are you sure that you know what you're doing? Because you might make that investment and spend that money and you may be forced Shout to rip it out, you know. And it's happened uh, since we had that designation. Okay. People okay. had to change things that they did. Ooh. Yeah. What, um... One, I don't remember, um, the, the house, the gray and black house that's like kind of like right behind Oh, yes, it. yes, 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 yes. That's why his house looked a mess for so long. Cause, okay. Um, yeah. He had tried to do something. He tried to do something. He didn't right. get proper authority to do it, so they kind of stopped him. Right, right, yeah. right. But, um, so, you know, as it turns out, you can <laughs> legislate taste. But you have to be a landmark, right. you know, committee to do so. Right. But really, the most beautiful thing about just this designation, and we started, you know, as you suggested, with the zoning. Um, at some point, there was some discussion. Do you want to pause for a moment? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I'm okay. going to do the clap thing again, yeah. All, all right. right, all right. We are rolling. What was I saying? <laughs> Uh, the right. thing, okay. I know I said I would write down what you were saying. Uh, right, right, and then right, I was right, writing down right. some Legislating other things. taste. It was legislating, legislating taste. taste, but you were saying something right after that. Yes, yes, yes. And I've totally forgotten what that is. Well, I can tell you it makes me think of a follow up question. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, several follow up questions, actually, is. Um, oh, I know what it is. I'm go sorry. for it. Okay, so when we started the, uh, the zoning, um, all of Southeast Queens was going to be under Mayor Bloomberg. Um, it seemed like the whole city was rezoned. And there was some discussion about rezoning at uh, St. Albans um, and Adelaide Park in particular. And they were, the mayor was encouraging everyone across the city to, you know, quote unquote, upzone, right? At least in neighborhoods, something other than up east side. Um, and what that would have meant was that single family homes in this neighborhood, you would be able to tear homes down and put up multifamily dwellings. And I mean, it was kind of extraordinary to me because I, I mean, they were encouraging, I remember they came out to our meeting, the zoning folks, and we're like, well, yeah, this is what we're suggesting. And we were like, well, why in the world would you suggest that? In particular, when so much, I mean, that's when the city was exploding, and so much about the rest of Southeast Queens were single family homes going down and four family homes going up in their place and really destroying neighborhoods, particularly Queens neighborhoods, you know, because you previously could go on back streets and do shortcuts and it was all a piece of cake. People would park in their driveways, et cetera, et cetera. But when you take down several single family homes on a block and put literally four family homes up, it was a, it's, it just got insane. Traffic and parking um, is nightmare. And it's it's like that way now. I mean, it's like, you know, we don't have alternate side of street parking, but, you know, it's essentially you do because you've got a, the parking is just horrendous. So all that to say, we, I at least saw what was going on, and I'm sure these ladies did and other folks, and so, okay, well, we're not going to do that. You know, right. we're not going to let you destroy this neighborhood. And again, this is well before the landmarking thing. Mm -hmm. yes. where, and there were already some single-family homes, at least one or two, 
that were um, the home. Their grandfather didn't. That's right. right. The, remember down the block right down here, right. the one-story ranch that was torn down and replaced with four well, units. Because that side and could do that. Yeah. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. So the first thing was really just sort of the zoning and changing that. So really that was the first victory that we were able to just sort of um, uh, to make sure that the zoning was going to stay one family. But they tricked us. Zoning. Because they didn't do all of Addison Park. They did not, right? They yes, and and I don't think we knew that at the time. Um, and so I think we were still back end over That's here right. uh, is not zoned. It's, it's zoned for two family, uh, which I still want to change. That's right. on the other so side of one twelve. On, right. on the other side, it is. On yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, I think it's unfair that mm -hmm. they didn't do the all Addison Park mm -hmm. because it is taking away already from the character mm -hmm. of Addison Park. Like. You're like, where did this building come from? Right, right. It doesn't fit in here. Right. And um, someone came up to me. Um, I'm on the Queen Civic Congress of, um, of um, you know, in, in Queens, I'm pre vice president. And someone from that organization came up to me when I first joined it and said, you know what? Uh, they didn't do your zoning right. And it was done intentionally. And so I'm like, okay, but nothing it hasn't been changed since then. Mm -hmm. And we really need to, that's the only thing that I regret that. Um, that we need to do something about that zoning because it is ruining Addisley Park and it is ruining the, the rest of the neighborhoods. A lot of the other neighborhoods in Queens, St. Albans, were mainly, were mainly one family. Mm -hmm. But since that zoning changed, you see people knocking mm -hmm. them down and mm -hmm. putting up two and three or four families and it's ruining the character of Queens. Yeah. People right. move to Queens for the beauty of the, the, the land and trees. the houses that's and nice. the trees. Right. <laughs> and right. that's all disappearing now. Right. It's all changing, it's disappearing, and we need to stop it before it gets worse. Right, right. For, for, fortunately, it's only a tiny piece of Asley Park that still mm -hmm. has the multifamily just sort of dwelling and stuff. Um, but, but, but the vast majority is, yeah. is single family yeah. zoning. So. And you can see walking around here, it really stood out to me, just these huge front lawns. Yes. And it's not just that there are lots of trees, the trees are old. That's right. Yes. You That's don't right. see that anywhere else right. in the city to have, you know, this long boulevard of old yeah. trees. Yeah, and you can right. see that it's an, it's an old area, even without looking at the beautiful homes. Yes. But, right. but it's important as a black, uh, as an African American um, person, um, to see to let our kids see, mm -hmm. look, this is what you could have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, as I grew up, I'm like, oh, I want mm -hmm. one of those houses. Mm -hmm. Even Absolutely. though I didn't care for living in Jamaica or something, right, right, I believe right. it, it was something different riding past Linden, like, Very oh, nice. wait, this is a nice, you know, mm -hmm. we do have nice areas in Jamaica. That's right. And we do have nice areas uh, everywhere in Jamaica, except for where they're rezoning it mm -hmm. to build multi, and then it starts starting to look like projects. Right, right. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, I understand uh, that you know that they have apartment buildings. Those those are mm -hmm. fine. They've been there. It's the it's the buildings that they're tearing down mm -hmm. that are, are tearing up the the look of, of Jamaica, mm -hmm. the look of St. Albans, where African Americans um, and blacks um, have have had it and they've maintained their houses in good condition and everything. And now it's 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 changing and it's very disappointing. You mm -hmm. go and you look and. You can't park, have, you know, not in Nassau Park, you can park around here, but in the other places where they weren't able to preserve their their community, mm -hmm. it, it, you could see that it, it's, it's, it's really, suffering. It's, it's suffering. And the way communities um, are designed has a lot of effect on how neighbors interact with each other, yes. in spaces. So what does it mean, not just for traffic and parking, but to be in a place that has big front lawns, you know, front doors? Well, we all know each other. Right? Yeah, we... We, we love each other. I don't hear many um, neighborhood um, arguments or anything. Right, no. Because right, right. we all we have, a, we, have, we have the same interests. We want to keep our homes beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like you you know, I love you. Both you two, I mean, you have the best houses in the community to uh, me. Yes. <laughs> I put the models in my head. All right, all right. You know, something I want to recreate. Right. Thank you. But, on which I've done yours, you know that. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but no, it's, we, we just all, you know, we're proud um, to live here. Yeah. And my, my family, my, my, my grandson's very proud, mm -hmm. you know, that his, his grandmother lives here and one day this will be his. That's right. You know, and I said, you know, you have to work hard because a lot of times these children get these homes and they don't take care yeah. of them. Also. Or they lose them. They right. lose them right. because right. they think right. it's free because, yeah. no, it's not free. <laughs> it costs a lot of money without a mortgage to run a house. You know, and some of these young people, they just don't get that. Yeah, yeah. But at least now, I mean, if they were to lose them, then there's a restriction about what can be built in this place, you know? That's so true. even if you built a new home, it's going to have to be just sort of, yeah, at least an interesting home, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. um, because it has to go before the Landmarks Commission to right. have a group themselves. So. You guys talked a lot about um, meeting the elders and learning, you know, the oral history mm-hmm. of this place from the elders. Tell me more in detail about that. You know, who did you learn from? What did you learn? The Vaughn sisters. The Vaughn sisters. Yes. Yeah, yes. They, they're like twins. They they lived here all. They know everything. Like for f- f- sixty years, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they lived with the celebrities when they were here. You yeah. know, they told they would meet in their basements and have jam sessions with the musicians and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Um, I think the most famous just sort of, you know, house slash resident of the community, other than James Brown, was Count Count Basie. Basie. Right. (laughs) So he had a home uh, just a little bit up the way on, what's that, Sayers and whatever street that is. But he had a home, but more importantly, he had a pool. Uh, So that pool, from what I understand, you know, became a central point of the community Mm -hmm. because apparently... I don't know. It he seemed opened like it a up. He opened no, because I was my mother would take me to that home. Wow! And they'd have wow. parties there, Damn and I'd right. go swimming in the in the pool. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Yeah. So it really was. He opened it up, you mm-hmm. know, and they destroyed that house. It's not there. They put yeah, the pool. New that's houses. right. That's right. Three houses. Four oh no, houses no, no, the house place. is still there. The, where, where no, the pool was. It's about three, four houses there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. But the house actually, the house is a fairly mm-hmm. modest house itself. But it was all the land, and the fact he had the pool. That's right. That's right. So where the yeah. pool was, there are now Archie Spigner, Spigner yeah. the first black councilman from there, and lives in About one of the five, houses. Four or five houses. Yeah. Right, right. So where the pool was. So there's no more community pool, uh, right. but there are these homes, and at least they're attractive homes. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Um, so that's what I kind of, so I never got to swim in the pool, I did. Um, <laughs> but I heard about the pool, uh-huh. and I never met James Brown. And I did that um, too. I was actually, I, I, I met him all, because James Brown used to have uh, concerts in the park. Oh, okay. did, you, did you know that? Uh, right I, in St. Albans Park? No. I didn't know he gave them enough. Yeah, he gave them. He okay. was there when he lived there. He, right. he, he was, I don't know how long he was there, but he definitely lived in the house and had the concert, free concert in the park. Right. And Count Basie, um, I mean, he was there. I mean, I got to meet him. I, as, as a matter of fact, I was a friend of someone that worked for him, hmm. his chauffeur. Okay. So I was able to go inside the house when he was there. Wow. Wow. See, I'm learning all this. I, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. been holding out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was fun. It was exciting. Now, I can tell you the other thing that I do remember about this neighborhood, and it just sort of suggests that young people are insane. They were then, they're still now. Um, there was a company called the Ideal Toy Company yes, uh, that was right there. on the other side of Sayers, which is the boundary for Addisley Park. And there was a fire there. And there was this fire, and insanely, the fire was happening, and the children, you know, I don't know whether I ran into the building, but you know, all of these ridiculous young people were, everyone knew it was a toy factory, so they found themselves, you know, going into the building as the fire was happening. Just a bit of absurd, you know, teenage nonsense. So that's the most sort of history that you I know. You get toys, right? And that's right, that's right. The ideal toy company was across the street, they had this fire, you know? So, you know. I don't get that one. <laughs> I don't know that I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, any other of the, the the elders, as you call them, that you would like to remember or stories that you would like to, to pass on when we have this chance? Uh, oh, uh, I didn't know him no, well. I Because he lived right here on 180th, right? Yeah, he was yep. at another house I created. Yeah, and he was an officer of the Civic at some point, was he? Yeah, um, he was parliamentarian. Okay. Yeah, something. His, Who was this again? His name was Boston Chance. He was right. a very proper gentleman. Um, very uh, vociferous. He mm-hmm. always had a lot to say at the meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, very particular. Um, just you know, and, and, and lives in a. I call it an, one of the anchor houses. Um, there were a few houses that were built with the Spanish tile roof on, in this community, and he had one, and they were on corners, right on Murdoch. On Murdoch, yes. Yeah, so both corners. Um, <coughs> maybe at four corners. I think they had homes with the Spanish tile. Right next tile to roof. Pastor Simmons' house. That's across the street. Okay. No, on the other side. Okay. You yeah, know, not, not that house. Okay. Um, but they're just beautiful homes, and um, you know, he was very uh, particular about how this community was uh, run, um, mm-hmm. how the civic association was run. Had a lot to say. Uh, he's gone now. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't the thing know. that I think um, very proud people. Um, in a very old school way, you know, old school way. Just people who just took great pride in the neighborhood that they lived in and 
cared for their houses, you know, uh, in that manner. So the Vaughn sisters, Muriel and what's my other Vaughn sisters' name? The first name? <laughs> they are just these two. Who were the sisters? Uh, the movie that they made on Long Island, and they were descendants of Kennedys. <sighs> Great Gardens. Great Gardens, okay. So these are our Great Gardens, you know, <laughs> sisters. They're not as eccentric as they were from the Great Gardens, but they are equally just sort of magical, if you will. You know, they argue with That's each right. other. They argue with each other. You don't and, remember this, and oh, yeah. you're, you're oh, just making that up. Oh, also. my God. And, and, and they drive their Mercedes like two two blocks or a block. That's right, that's right. Time. They're always yeah. together. That's right. Always together. That's right. And they're just, and they're, they're just, they're beautiful in um, uh, because they're just they're regal, you know. Mm -hmm. Back when that's what you did, <laughs> you know. Uh, so who else? The Vaughn sisters. Who else has been here for a while? Um, Miss, Miss Handy, Joan Handy. Oh, Joan Handy, right? Um, is she she's still here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't been to meetings lately. Right. Olivia, so busy. Um, uh, Banks. That's what Olivia Banks, Banks has been here Banks. for quite some time. Oh wow. Uh, uh, Miss Cohen has been here for a long time. Bernice Cohen has been yeah. here for a while. And who was the woman who used to live diagonally across from Bernice Cohen? Uh, I forget her name. Um, Judy. Uh, uh, Judy, yes. What's her last name? Mm -hmm. uh, is she still there? Yeah. Okay. Judy's still there. Yeah. No, yeah. but I, I don't know. I can't yeah. remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, ah. Uh. There, there, there were people that when we, when we went for the landmarking, um, we went into the to the, to the city, the commission. There were mm -hmm. a lot of people that there was a lady right on on this street. Um, yeah, on one thirteenth. Was an older man with the white hair she, on the corner, right? She's on the corner. She had a whole story, and I was thinking wow. about her when I was coming here. Mm. Um, Something she brought to the LPC yeah, and read it. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, she had been there a long time. They talked about the um, Agua Force situation that was on this block. The older gentleman, he moved away. Oh, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Right? Oh, yes, I do know yeah, what you're talking he about. He was um, very. <laughs> see, this is what happens when you get older <laughs> yourself. You just forget everyone's name. Oh even, my God. Uh... And he's my neighbor. I've been my neighbor forever. Oh, oh. my goodness. Oh, well. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I, I want to try and stir some of this up because, yeah. I mean, it's. Try, yeah, but it's like yeah. stirring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because it, it's almost like um, when we became successive presidents or something like that, um, it was almost like a changing of the guard, if you will. Mm -hmm. So like when Barack Obama became president, um, of course we went back a little bit <laughs> in terms of age. Uh, so the person who was the president before you, was Julia Nazaire the president? Julia yes. Nazaire. Okay. And so um, Julia was older. Uh, than you for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, no, actually, she was younger. No, I'm only joking. Okay. Okay. Right. No, no. So uh, no, but she like, was older than I. It was kind of a changing of the guard, if you will. Because she had yeah. moved. I think she moved. Uh, she had no, moved, Julia, and then her sister. Oh, Julia didn't move. Her sister, oh, it's her sister that moved. Is Alice still she here? She passed. Alice passed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All of her sisters are gone now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's still here. But you mean from like one generation? Yes, that's what it kind of seemed like. Yeah. You know, um, that's what it felt like. So, whereas those folks, they actually knew, um, you know, even more people. folks. Yeah. Uh, I had to meet those people. And they were um, here forever. Yes. Um, I didn't really know anybody. Yeah. All, the only person I knew was my aunt and uncle, and they were both um, gone by then. Right. So, uh, yeah. So I didn't really know anybody here when I came. Yeah. So, but it's interesting. So, the, the, actually, the, the oldest person I know from Adelaide Park is actually my father. And he will tell a story about when they were moving from oh, Harlem. Bought him. Ah, mm. So, he, the house, he bought the house when it was new. And Fred Stark uh, was the developer of many of the homes in the neighborhood. And I don't know, I don't think that the community was a black community at that point. And so, it was kind of a... Um, not scandalous, kind of a um, break the mold kind of thing when Fred Stark actually sold this house to my grandmother and grandfather. And my father tells the story about he actually found the house or something and he met with Fred Stark and, you know, there was some conversation about how much it cost or something like that 
And it seems to me that Fred Stark may have made some concession uh, for them to buy the house. And maybe the concession was, I'm going to let you black folks buy the house, <laughs> you know. Um, but he moved into the house, again, right around the corner when it was a brand new home. And was there until he got married. So. And he is now, old as my brother, he was born in 29. So he is 88. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's all good. He's only 20 years younger than And my, uh, kid, my, my uh, kids are excited. Um, they're like, Mom, when you leave and I have this house, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> I'm like, only if you're active in the Civic will uh, you get this house. It's, yeah. It's a beautiful house, so I don't really blame them for uh, bringing <laughs> that up. They're just trying to let the parents know there will be no reverse mortgages here because this house is, should stay in the family. And I had no idea that this house was, was friend, owned friend, uh, in your family. Aunt, so, yeah, right. my aunt uh, and uncle. Yeah. And uh, I was really proud of my aunt. Mm. Uh, I'll show you a picture of her. She was a very regal lady. Mm. Unbelievable. And um, she used to drag me down with her, not drag, because I really wanted to get dressed up and go with her to go mm. shopping for art supplies. Mm. And um, we, she dressed me up because I'd come over in my brother's sh <laughs> uh, brother's uh, jeans and suspenders and a, an Apollo shirt. But by the time I got to Gimbal's, I had a little ruffle dress with Aww. ruffle mm. socks and whatever. So I went with my aunt to go shopping for mm. her frames. and. And we wore gloves and, mm, you know, mm. I was very happy. Right. Again, it reminds me of just sort of the Vaughn sisters and really this neighborhood back in the day, you mm -hmm. know, um, before the overdevelopment. Um, these were folks who moved from Harlem and Brooklyn, and there were a ton of school teachers. Um, so, and that was really all of St. Albans and so really some very fine people, fine in that they just wanted better for themselves and stuff and for their children. Um, so it's just interesting. And when you say that, I mean, my grandmother, I remember she was the same kind of lady that, you know, you're talking about with your aunt. And this was back in the day where downtown Jamaica, um, Macy's was there, Gertz was there, mm -hmm. um, and this was well before all of, you know, the demise, if you will. Um, and downtown Jamaica is experiencing a renaissance now, but back in the day, it was fantastic. And in the rest of the neighborhood, I remember uh, I used to buy my shoes um, from the Buster Brown oh. that was right on the corner of Linden Boulevard and Farmers Boulevard. And it's now, you know, a bodega. <laughs> um, so really, all of this was just, um, was just lovely. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so this is um, uh, not the last piece of loveliness, but certainly one of the last pieces of just sort of loveliness. Now, when we landmarked this, um, we were trying to get the hospital, the VA hospital, landmarked as well, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't, they wouldn't budge. They said it's federal property, but that should be that should be landmarked. So we're still going to work towards that um, because. Um, they, at that time, it wasn't 50 years old, they said. The building was good. But it's Art, it's art Deco, mm -hmm. and it, it's historic. Look, It's like uh, very, very um, precious to us, mm -hmm. you know, and we feel it should be landmarked. Um, and it's an I, exquisite building. It, yeah, right. and I really think that they didn't landmark it because they thought that they could use the land later on for something else. Mm -hmm. You so, know, um, there's a, if you take an aerial shot of the building, mm -hmm. it looks like an anchor. Yeah, yes. it's made as an anchor. It's made as an anchor yes. intentionally yep, yep, by yep. the Navy. Right, yeah. because before it was the Marine, um, yeah. the VA it center, VA. it was the Naval Hospital. Mm -hmm. And it literally, the building is in the shape of an anchor, and it's an exquisite building. The There's an auditorium yeah. in the building. Yeah, they have a yeah. bowling um, and I argued with the, the landmark commission because they, they would not um, landmark it, mm -hmm. which I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's to be continued. Yeah. And I'm sure there must be like a, a WPA mural or two in there uh, because the auditorium, again, is exquisite. It's a, very, uh, it's a very light building, as in like, you know, in the shape of this anchor, there are windows on both sides of um, the building. So it's just, it's flooded with light. Um, it's a beautiful place, yeah, beautiful. you know, um, and the grounds are beautiful. That's right on um, Linden and 179. That's right, that's right. It's funny because my aunt um, uh, was a WAC, uh, what, the Women's Auxiliary mm -hmm. Corps, and she was in, I grew up going down to D.C. to visit her, and 
we used to go to Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And she, that place to her was like, felt like the White House. Yeah. And so it felt like the White House, you know, for us as well. Yes, yes. So when you went, when I went on that campus as a child, when I first got on this campus, it felt that same yes. way. There was just so much... Um, history there. Uh, there was oh so much God. history there. It just had a stature to it. And you mm -hmm. felt like, you know, you were just turning back the clock yeah, to absolutely. like some... Just looking at right. it, I think comes drivers down on Linda Boulevard as they're yeah. driving in the traffic nowadays. Yeah. As you're riding past and you look over, you see the green. Yes. Uh, we need more green and, and the churches. Mm -hmm. That's and right, the churches, oh, that's they're right. they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it's important that we try to, to keep that building. Yeah. And it was interesting because when we were doing this whole fight about what was going to happen to that property, look, I was a, a proponent of you know, once we make sure that the needs of the veterans were taken care of, that if anything was going to happen, that it was going to return to a golf course, you know. Right. And if not a golf course, you know, obviously a park. A community you park. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it could have been, uh, because it's, it, uh, one half of the property, the, I guess the government only took one half of the property. Right. So the other half is still a park. Easy. But to put the things back together, it would just be a spectacular park. Um, for a community that deserves a spectacular Absolutely. park and stuff, you know. But the veterans so. weren't going for that. No, yeah. no, no, you know, and yeah. for good reason, because yeah. there are not a whole lot of VA hospitals that are close by. There's one way out on Long Brooklyn, Island, there's Manhattan, Brooklyn, right. and way in Brooklyn. So, and so most of the community wants to bring a VA hospital back there or a medical center there, right. so that they would you would bring jobs back to the community, mm -hmm. um, because when that community was thriving, like they were talking about, mm -hmm. is when that hospital was yes. up and running. Yep, yep. Um, and so they've taken away most of our hospitals in this area. We mm -hmm. just have Jamaica Hospital, mm -hmm. and that's it. Uh, Queens Hospital and, and Center. More, and right. if you go out to Nassau, you know, you're right. all Jewish. Right. But, uh, but uh, what was the hospital on Jamaica Avenue? Mary Immaculate. Mary, yeah, they closed that down, yep. and they put apartments there. This now. is a, an aging community also, and then, then the veterans that we have, you know, they're very old, and they have to go so far away. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if there were people to just use the facilities that are right here. Yep. Yeah. Bringing it back a little bit, um, when you approached your council member about, I mean, I guess the rezoning plan was already getting worked on, but about landmarking specifically, what motivated you to do that? That was the idea that if you got the neighborhood landmarked, it would help preserve, preserve it, it physically, or was it mostly because of the history? What yeah. was it, your thought? It was because of the history to yeah. preserve it physically, to, to keep it from having these huge um, multiple dwellings um, um, in, in place of the tutors that were here. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what, and this is what the community wanted. This is what we wanted here. Yeah. You know, but help, help refresh my memory. Did the Landmarks Preservation Committee find us as a result of all of the work of the Historic Districts Council? Um, or did we reach out? I mean, I no, can't say. No, we reached out. To Landmarks. To Landmarks. Okay. And then Landmarks came and then found what, what you know, what we, had a, jewel here. we had a jewel here. We had a jewel here. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yeah. So I, I, from the, the notes that I have, HGC got their grant to do all the research you were talking about mm -hmm. right around 2007, which is around the same time that you guys were doing this rezoning. So it yeah. sounds like it was sort of a colliding. That happened after. Uh, no, that, I think. Well, they got the no. grant first, and then they did the research. So the, the okay. survey was done right. all the way through That's 2008. Right. 2008 but 2009. they had already come in. So the first, in the January 20, 2006 Six. meeting, was when the Historic Districts Council came out. For so the they were already time. thinking about this in That's 2006. That's right. And then oh, they had done some work, but I do remember then they applied for a grant to either expand their work or do something right. more Right, Greg had told the, the Civic okay, they, they did this, they had this, this work that they did, he held it up and he's like, and now they, they want to come back and uh, get a grant so mm -hmm. they can help us try to get our landmark. So everyone was excited. That's right. And um, that's, that, that, you know, he, he, you know, he got that landmark going after she got the zoning um, done. So, yeah. It, it, yeah. So it sounds like these things really were working. Inter yeah. They were. Yeah. 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 They were. And it's just like God, because for me to take over after him and then stop the uh, the VA. Um, the VA mm -hmm. cuz that would have ruined mm -hmm. this community as well yep. um only because we're trying to keep the characteristic mm -hmm. um for our kids and for whoever wants to live mm -hmm. move in here mm -hmm. you know um there's not many communities like this uh, they have Cambridge Heights over there that, mm -hmm. but their houses are are a different type of house mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. this beautiful neighborhood beautiful. for modest homes Laurelton has beautiful homes too yep. But it's it's different feeling 
than uh, what we have here. This was restricted to black people in the 20s. I mean, we were not able to move in here. And um, I, I don't remember when it happened, but probably like 1925 or so, um, the first black entertainer was able to move in here and only because they were entertainers, you know. And we, it's pretty much the way it is right now, except for the, the newer houses that you see around. But this is the way it was. It wasn't built, it really wasn't built for us. It was built. Right. Where Babe Ruth was, you know, with his home right there on Linden Boulevard, mm -hmm. and I guess he was there probably before James Brown, but yep. that's yep. above my favorite. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> right. definitely. Yeah. They said my house was a school, and matter of fact, I oh. met someone uh, about two weeks ago that went to school there. Hmm. I like, I went, I went okay, to ask him. Crazy. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. Right. Yeah. Did you get a picture of that person? It must be no, pretty old. He, he, no, he's like ten years older. Than, he's about your age, sixty. He's about sixty-eight or something like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you mean it was converted to a school? It wasn't originally a school. He's saying it was a school. I don't know if it was originally a school. No, it wasn't originally a school because the first person that owned it, that uh, that moved in there, was a, 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 a owner of a tile company, hmm. and then he got convicted for bribery. And he was in jail, and then oh. then he got off. If you Google it, you can find oh, it. Oh, okay. It was interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, I was kind of disappointed that mm. someone, this, it wasn't someone famous, but it was a businessman, and oh. he went to jail. Yeah, he went to jail. A lot of famous people <laughs> went to jail, <laughs> so, you know. You want to be famous for something else. But that's why my whole house is like, tight, got the yeah, bathrooms are all tiled so and married. That is so interesting. That's right. That's what I thought about when you said oh. that. I said that makes sense and stuff, you know. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. It's so great to learn the history of each of these little homes that it become is. such projects. It is. Um, I'm curious about, um, just to spend a little more time learning about what were the conversations like in that first meeting that you referenced in 2006 when the HDC came out? What were people's responses? What did they know about the process already? What did they learn? Um, what did the community think of the whole thing? They were excited. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't remember this meeting so much. I do remember Simeon and his, and the guy who used to work there as well. What is his name? Um, uh, I forget his name. So people were excited. Um, I think people were excited, and they were also a little like, what's going on here, <laughs> you know? Um, because I don't think we had had, well, certainly not recently, so much interest in the community from outsiders. And I don't think anyone ever thought that there was this was some secret gentrification thing going on. But they were a little curious, because no one had really, other than the tour buses who used to come through the community to just sort of, you know, to look and see you used to live here. Um, but they were both very lovely people, and they very clearly, you know, under, you know, just communicated from the beginning, this is what we're trying to do. Um, and then I know I, I was flattered because it seemed like we were one, if not the only black community that was receiving this kind of attention. So it was like, wow, you know, somebody's going to come in and really just sort of document um, what was certainly not documented recently. And I think that's what it turned to really quickly. First it was like, well, you know, who are these people? And then it was like, oh, this is wonderful. Um, and then they sent out their, uh, their researchers. And so when people started walking through the neighborhood taking pictures and knocking on doors, then you, know, you didn't think that these were real estate speculators. You knew that they were people from the Historic Districts Council. Districts Council. And then by the time the Landmarks people came in, you know, we were pretty accustomed to you know, the attention, if you will. Um, but I do remember that that one it meeting... It made it so much easier for us. That's right. That's right. But I do remember that one meeting was just huge because there were all these people because then it was about to be serious. It was nice mm -hmm. to have somebody write something about you. Mm -hmm. But then when they were talking about you're not going to be able to change your, your roofing, <laughs> you know, then it became really Yeah, talk to me about that second meeting. Were there people who hadn't heard about the process yet who were still getting caught up? Yeah. Or, you know, what understand. kind of questions were you getting? They didn't understand the process. They knew right. we were going to be historic, but they right. didn't know the rest of it, that like, we have permission, you can't change a window, you can't do a lot of things, right. you know. These are people that probably weren't going to the civic meetings. That's right. right. That heard about this exactly. meeting and said, I better go to this one. That's yeah. right. You're right. Absolutely people. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So again, it was just sort of the, the, you know, the newsletters, you know, were letting people know in a cursory fashion just sort of what was going on. Now, the hardcore people, they had been to all the meetings, but the people who hadn't been to all the meetings, you know, they just showed up and it was like, like where, oh. Where have you been? Right, <laughs> right where have right, you right, been? Right. We've been talking about this. Yeah, theirs was more just sort of, you know, wondering, 
then you know there were no up in arms. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever went through an up in arms kind no, of thing. No. You know. I know that Renee uh, decided that she was not going to put all the information in the newsletter because if they wanted to know, they should come to the meeting. That's right. That's right. And that was very Renee. <laughs> yes. And don't ask. If you don't come, then you're not. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> but we still had a newsletter. No, we did, but it did not give yeah, you all the very condensed. It was not all the information we yeah. used to. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. And I, think, I was trying to save money at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So and I, I think it was page. you who was, you know, really adamant about, you know, across Linden Boulevard. Of course. I right. live right across the street from it. So yeah. before be, before I, more important, it was more, at first it started being a selfish thing where I don't want that across the street from me. I don't want this big development. <laughs> Um, and then it was like, wait a minute, the veterans, you know, um, you know, and then I, then the veterans didn't understand why we were concerned. I'm like, because I live here, mm-hmm. so that's we had to get on the same page. That's right, we did have to get. On the uh, same that page. took a little while. Yep, yep, yep. Because they didn't trust us at first. That's right. They're like, oh, you, you all want that land for yourself. I'm like, no, we're on the same page as you. We yep. want the land for you, and we want it to stay the same mm-hmm. as it is. But we wanted to serve you, mm-hmm. so we had to gain trust, and then. Once we gained the trust, then we were able to to go against any elected official mm-hmm. because they we had the community right, and the, the veterans right? and the right. federal government because yeah. we, we were all on the same team. Yeah, but well, weren't you? What I was asked specifically about um, the homes on the other side of Linden. Oh yeah, yeah, that was me. That's right. So at first, right. the landmarking, um, uh, the New York City landmarking um, department they had a preliminary um, map. had a preliminary map. Right. Oh, that's and, right. I was going to ask. That's yeah. right. And it just had one side, uh, had the uh, northern side of Linden Boulevard, mm-hmm. right? And I have a friend that lives on the south side. That's right. Whose house is similar to all ours. And like you said, that, that probably was built around the same time. That's right. So uh, she, I said to her, well, we're getting ready to landmark. I, th- I think you need to start coming to our civic meetings. Because right. they were never invited. They don't even have a civic they didn't have organization a civic. Right. over there. Right. But no, they had and, one, but my aunt, some cousin of mine, right. with the same last name. Didn't one of their houses have Addisley Park on the D? Yes, yes. Debbie, that's, Debbie. Right. Debbie. Yeah. that's right. My friend's house had Addisley Park on the D. Right, it was on the other side so, of the Boulevard. So right. I said, okay, Deb, I said, start coming to our meetings. Mm-hmm. So I said, your area is, is a small enough area that you all should be part of ours. Because before that, mm-hmm. someone with the last name of mine, who is a distant cousin, was running the Civic over there. Okay. And I tried to contact her. Right. But I don't know what happened to her. So in the meantime, I said, Debbie, forget about that Civic because I don't think it's going on anymore. Come join us. Right. It's a small area right around mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. us, uh, right. the mm-hmm. park, and um, and Asley Park, there's a, a, a community that looks just like ours. So I said, come to me. So Debbie started coming. And I had to convince some of these people in this neighborhood mm-hmm. that that's okay that they're that's actually right. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they were right mad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. old school people who were yeah. like, oh, hell we, we no. We never considered those people over there, I said, Park. They had the same I'm exact like, what? houses. Yes, but, you know. what the heck? They were so, just being protected. Yeah. So, anyway, I went Snobbish. to Landmark. And, and, yes, <laughs> that's what it is. So, I went to Landmark Committee and I said, please, I said, you need to go across the street right. and check out those houses, too, because if you mess up those houses, or, or not you, but if developers come in and and, and take those houses and rebuild them and destroy them and make a multi-family, right. it's going to ruin Asley Park. They are Asley Park. Right. So they went over there and they saw that. Right. And I was like, I took a, a yeah. breather. Right. I'm like, thank God. So it's so interesting because if I look at this very first newsletter that I did when I became president in January of 2006, we had the first meeting with the Historic District Council where they actually came out. And then the last newsletter that I published in January 2010 was we had a draft of the historic district. So this literally is how long it took Mm -hmm. to go from historic districts to the landmarks, you know, a draft of the landmark district. And it includes the area Mm -hmm. that that Renee here. So I said, let me get involved. (laughs) He was in charge. He was the president. I said, let me get involved in this. That's right. Because I have to. She didn't trust me. Yeah. But it has the area that, you know, they made Because it took some convincing. Sense. You know, people didn't, they weren't used to across the street being right. like, what the heck is right, this? Right, 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 right. But uh, finally. Uh, yeah, so this was the draft. I mean, so literally just sort of shows that it started. The beginning to the end. That's right. With Marie and ended Indeed. just sort of with Renee and stuff. So. so what kind of advice would you guys have for other neighborhoods that discover they have a resource like this and want to 
preserve it? Is any learning experiences, yeah, things you wouldn't the, uh, do HTC. again, or things you would? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> start with HTC. Yeah. If you live in a historic district, yeah. you know. Um, to me, it is all about the civic organization and the strength of that civic. You yes, know, it is. Um, we've always had what seems to me a, a strong civic. I mean, people who just sort of take pride. You know, there's pride of place. You know, or pride in place, whatever it is. Um, and so when they were talking about this zoning thing and they were trying to push this up zoning, people were like, well, that doesn't make any sense, you know. But for, for whatever reason, the people felt empowered here. You know, I've met other folks and, you know, they're just, you know, you know. That's never going to happen. That, 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 You're they're not gonna they're complaining. And again, sense. I mean, I go back to, you know, these are doers, you know, it's just like, you don't complain, you know, it's your neighborhood, you know, these are your elected officials, you know, so figure out what you want us. and, you know, and and organize and and get it done. You know, it's funny. And don't worry about who's doing what. That's right. We didn't worry about that. Right. If Greg said, Renee, do this, do that, I did it. Right. And if I didn't want to do it, I'd say, okay, I can't do that, but I'll do this for you and then you do that. That's we right. we never said, we never had attitudes or right. had any problems with doing extra work. Yep. You know, yep. We, yep. we had a lot of parties. Yep. <laughs> you know, we um, did have a party. We had yeah. a block, my block party. Yeah. And I remember when I wanted to do this block party and even some of the, um, some of the folks in the neighborhood were against it. Yes. I remember, I mean, yes. I, I put yes. a note on the doors of everyone along Murdoch Avenue, and to me it was just sort of, you know, yes. a Love polite courtesy. thing to do, mm -hmm. but it was at a courtesy. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget this one gentleman, um, he said, you know, he wrote a note back, you know, saying, um, no, I don't think this is a good idea, but he was one of maybe, I don't know, 20 people, and the other 19, you know, didn't mind, and so we went ahead, you know, and, um, and it was lovely, and I think he came out, you know, I think he envisioned something different yeah. than what we actually did, and it was beautiful, it was just, um, it was just old folks, young folks, and tables and right. games Horses. and that's Horses. right Horses. and vernon brought his his um his grill down yes um so it was a, a really Face a neighbor that's, right. that's right that's right that's right i still have those pictures too so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, so i think that's it you know a strong civic um and and knowing that with your organization you can control the destiny of your neighborhood and i think so many people just are not convinced that they can control the destiny of their neighborhood. And so they just wait for something to happen. And a lot of the zoning that took place, rezoning happened after Addisley Park. And I remember telling folks, I said, look, don't let you know that happen you know, to your neighborhood. And because they either didn't have an organized you know, civic or they just didn't think that they had the right to say no, a lot of stuff was upzoned. And a lot of the madness continues with it taking down one family mm -hmm. homes and putting up multifamily dwellings and stuff. So. Queens overall is a borough that um, hasn't benefited as much from landmarking and historic districts as other boroughs in the city have. And so I'm wondering if with this as a success story, you've seen attitudes towards historic districts or landmarking in other neighborhoods start to change or have people come to you to ask? How you did it? Nothing yet. Yeah. I think the Cambria Heights rezoning yeah. happened after yes, ours. Yes, it did. So the zoning, the zoning right? Yeah. And they probably. I don't know if they want to land more. Yeah, it's 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 tricky. It, the interesting thing to me is that Jamaica Estates is not a landmark neighborhood, um, and I don't even know whether it's a historic district. Now I get it because there's some people they would not have been able to build those mansions, you know, that they built had that zoning changed. So, you know, I guess... But I guess it's one family. I don't, I hardly see any two families right. going up that, there. Although it does seem as if there are multiple families living in yeah. these larger homes, I guess because culturally, you know, some folks, you know, it's tradition to mm -hmm. have several the generations in the, in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do seem to be one family as opposed to just sort of multiple families. Uh, but they're not a landmark, they're and, and clearly they're beautiful buildings and beautiful neighborhoods. And but for some reason they've just decided that you know even Bayside Hills is not a landmark, right? Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, wow. 
Do you think that'll start to change in the future, or no. do you think it's like a cultural so, thing? I think it's too late. I think the mega mansions are going up, and I don't think they don't, there's nothing to say. Yeah, to turn it back. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's amazing. I mean, they're pulling down nice, you know, mm -hmm. one family homes um, that are, you know, nice size homes and tripling, <laughs> you know, the square footage and, and building spectacular, um, you know, new homes that I'm sure are spectacular inside, mm -hmm. um, but, you know. Sometimes I, re I wonder if, um, if, I did, if we didn't landmark, I mean, I could knock my house down and put up three houses and make a good amount of money. I'd you have know? to, that would just, you but know, we would no longer be friends. No, <laughs> that house is too beautiful. Yeah, you but, know? But, but that's, I mean, that's the whole thing about yeah. landmarking. You can't do that, and even if right. you wanted to do that's that, correct. you can't do it. Right, right, right. And um, so that's a good thing in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the other bad thing, which I, I'm not sure, um, we're having a problem now in this community, which I, I haven't mm -hmm. talked to you two about, but uh, there's a, a beautiful house uh, that's landmarked mm -hmm. with, um, they, they had subdivided the land, the, the lot up Even prior. Like, Not that one, oh. another one. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one was wrong too, but right. they did the same thing yeah. over there on 179th, right. and they're going to so sell the lot separately. So I doesn't present. Yeah, I called up the so Landmark the Commission and they said there's nothing they can really yeah. do with it. I don't understand that. But it's on the historic district. Yeah. yeah. But I guess there's nothing to prevent you from subdividing a lot. It's you about the structure. That means it's going to be new homes in between these beautiful. But, but even if it's homes. a new home, it has to fit within the character. So, you know. Now, I, was, I thought you were going to point out the fact that we've had now, there are at least two empty lots that I know of that have been empty yeah, for the last. They, they knocked their homes down. Right, because. And they got stuck. And, even, yeah, they got stuck thinking that they could put some two family up there or something. Right, or even oh, just uh, a cheap one family. And, you know, I don't know what, um, what Landmark says about what a house has to look like as a new home, but it must be prohibitive because the lot right next to Bernice's house mm -hmm. has been empty yeah. since the beginning of time. Uh, and then the lot over on, whose Straight block is that? 177 Place. Uh, yes. 177. Isn't that 177. 177. Okay, there's a lovely home right to the left of right. it. Right, there's a big open lot. That's right, that's right. right. So and these are just... Yeah you know, huge lots that I guess until you have enough money and to was, come in there and build something spectacular, they're going to be yeah, empty lots. That was a beautiful yeah. house that they knocked down there. Okay. I, I don't recall the and house. Because they were going to knock it down and put a multiple unit. Yeah. And then right at that point, the zoning changed. That's right. So they couldn't do it. That's right. They didn't have a foundation. Yeah, we were rushing right. for things like that. We, That's we, right. we saw that go down. Yep, right? yep, and we yep. rushed. Yep. Because if I recall, that house down the block, the multifamily one, the house we wasn't get, we didn't built. Get it done yet. That's right, but the foundation was there. Yeah, the foundation, the foundation was, there. was there. That's right. 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 We, we didn't get it done in time. Yep, yep, yep. When you leave this house, if you go straight, you'll see the house we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, but it's four units, and it used to be a nice one-story ranch that used to flood, flood a lot. all the time. Right. Yeah. So that, that's the other huge thing that's been accomplished in the past right. you know, decade. Right. Um, what happened was after um, Andrea, uh, after we won the VA site um, the, from, the, from being developed, mm -hmm. And I became close friends with Andrea Scarborough. Uh, the wife of the assembly person. The wife of the assembly person. Right. Um, she, we said, okay, let's keep on moving with our successes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of people in Aslan Park decided, okay, what's our next uh, next problem, which is water flooding. And um, we went we went visiting homes that mm -hmm. had flooding, mm -hmm. and we spoke to DEP, mm -hmm. and they had we didn't realize it, but they had money that was already allocated to stop the, the flooding. There was a lot more involved because we had water coming from Jamaica Supply at one time, mm -hmm. and that stopped. So our, our um, water table underneath our homes mm -hmm. is high. It's a high water ta right. table um, because they used to drain it, and we used to use it, That's but right. now it's sitting there, mm -hmm. and we're getting the, uh, water from the Catskills. Right. So anyway, Andrea Scarborough became passionate with me on that, um, and that, then I pushed her as the next um, <laughs> president. <laughs> so that's the president now. She's doing a, a great job. Yeah. I think her term is ending, but um, she's she's an absolute absolute doer. The and I and I'm, I have to apologize to her. And I have apologized many times, but and I and I got used to get mad at him <laughs> because what happens is when you. When you leave the president post, right. you are so exhausted right. and worn out, right. and now you have other missions right. that you don't hardly go to the meetings. Right, right, right. So I kind of missed her meetings, even though we're close and we're still on, right. on right. topics. 
and we've all done it to each That's other. That's right. And, and, and she, like, you did used to get, she was like, where are you? You don't come to the meetings. <laughs> right. I'd be like, look, you just don't understand. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't go because I'm in my choir rehearsal. Oh, you know that. okay, the choir <laughs> rehearsal. No, it's, no, it's, not, it's real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> to say but, you do, but you do tend but I to work, work behind the scenes. Yeah, and that's, that's right. what we all do now. That's right. Yeah. We all work behind, behind the scenes. scenes. That's right. And it that's does what Andrea will you probably out. do as well. Right, right, we, right. You know, and we still are close with each other, yep, yep, and yep. we know how to contact each other in case there's some issue in the community. Yep. And then people tend to, you know, you know, just sort of be nostalgic for you know what was there, and it's like you know what, no, Good. nostalgia over. It's time to move, move on. on. <laughs> you know. Um, and they also nostalgic when when they're not doing the work. It's like no, yes, no, no, yes. come on now, stop move on. <laughs> like but our zip code that, change. That, that's all. Yes, that that that's right, never that's happened. Right. That's right. But I thought you were going to talk about also just you know there's a tremendous amount of work that that was done about the flooding because there was yes. major flooding, particularly on this yeah, street down the end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they. Uh, what was it? They dug up. They put. Um, they put um, new catch basins, catch basins in, in, and yeah. so they. And they're still working on it. That's right. And mm -hmm. first, they had to move the gas lines because the gas lines were in the street. Mm -hmm. So they did yeah. one project was to take the gas lines, put them beneath the sidewalks, and then go in and put in um, sewers yeah. and and the like yeah. into these new even more than catch basins. There was some other term for whatever, whatever. Yeah, there was no But a lot of that work um, was DEP funding, and again, that came really from the Civic being organized. Yes, yes. And, you know, when I became... And then the elected officials took it over like that's it was right. theirs. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but, but we know so how good. it started. That's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> because when we started to have meetings that featured, you know, the sanitation people and DEP, then it was like... Yes. That's when, you know, they talk about what they were doing. We're like, well, this flooding is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so it really just sort of made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. They don't have that flooding in. I just asked someone the other No, day. I mean, no, it's no, tremendous. It. <laughs> um, now, other places in Southeast Queens do, but there have been folks um, who've um, worked to remedy that as well. I think some absurd, like, two-thirds of DEP's budget is going to Southeast Queens, maybe it's a capital budget, to... Um, to fix a lot of the flooding issues that are all over just sort of Southeast Queens and stuff. I want to ask about, because you guys introduced the, this idea of like a changing of the guard and passing mm -hmm. from one generation to another. Do you think there's going to be a next generation and how will you pass on the stories of being in the pool of Count Basie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this idea of the history here and what it means, what this, what makes this community unique. How will you pass that history on to the next guard? And I know we tried to get interviews. We were doing that um, uh, of all the seniors that were in the community. I remember you were doing um, yeah, Historic District Council, they were doing, the Historic District Council, they were doing some interviews. And wasn't Landmarks doing interviews as well? I think so. They did some, but, for sure. But we also... Yeah, but yeah. I don't know that I have, that we have those interviews. I don't know who has those. You know. <laughs> I have them. Uh, yeah, we have some of them. No, um, just that. I mean, like, we have to just chronicle um, mm -hmm. the information so that, you know, like, it can be passed on. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't have the time at a meeting to have a conversation about that. We never really thought of it. We should. You know, um, but uh, I guess we could poss possibly do a little book or something. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that book that... that, that that the historic districts council, the the consultant yeah. woman who was working for them, she handed over a, a fat book yeah. with some fantastic history to, and stuff. Who has it? Uh, you know, I, I, I had made, it, and there copies. were several copies. Yes, mm -hmm. so I know that. You know, remember I told you that I put the the newsletters, yes, the newsletters. into the Long Island room. Right. I think I put um, one of those binders in there as well. Okay. So even if they don't get the benefit of oral history. Then, if they want to go over to that Long Island room, they will certainly find um, some documentation of just yeah, sort of what was going with, on. Yeah, I went there. I don't know what you told me about it, and I went there. Yeah. Very interesting you know. Yeah, very, very interesting room. Yeah. And there wasn't a whole lot about Asley Park. That's the thing. There were a few articles, and that's the thing that was like, well, that's crazy, you know. Um, but as far as the, the seniors that are here, you know, with their stories, mm -hmm. we, you know, I don't know where we find that information. Yeah, Maybe we don't. You yeah. don't, unless it's in those, um, those newsletters. You know what we need to do? Mm. And see, so <laughs> I was not going to suggest that you do it, or do you do it. You know they have, uh, you know, NPR has StoryCorps. 
you know, that whole thing where they go, they have these story called booths, or, and they move around oh, yeah. the country, and you go in and you tell the story, you know, with someone else, oh. you know, about so and so, and that would be fascinating to have our own little story core. And, and Queen's Library has the Memory Project, so we just need to tap it's into a, their effort and, yeah, so the and bring them over here. And do some interviews because they have the Vaughn sisters, yeah. um, but they Plus are his so. Plus, godmother is, is I'd say ninety. Who? And she's here. Yeah. Who? Oh, Lester's Lester's godmother. Oh, Lester. Right, yeah. Lesser. Her My husband. husband. Yeah, her husband. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that would be interesting to. Yeah. She um, she used to work. She's a she was a head nurse at the VA hospital. Wow, that's even greater. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are thinking about this. I'd yeah, like to well, encourage well, more <laughs> thoughts about that, obviously, yes, yes, and then yes. also. Um, just all the records that you guys have from, from your research, and I know the Historic District Council archives their research, you put some newsletters over towards the library, but of, of the, just the civic organization's papers and the, the landmark project papers, where are all of those things and do you have any plan for saving them, preserving them? What? What did you do with all of your new? Uh, yeah, I didn't throw nothing away. Okay, that's we, what I'm saying. So we just need to <laughs> deposit them in the long island. We just need to deposit them. All right, well, we'll go right? through them. I'll we'll get them together. Them. Yes, absolutely. And wait, before I forget, Frampton Talbert. That was the yes, other historic yeah, dishes yes, council guy. Yes. Uh, oh. Frampton and Simeon and stuff. Frampton. Uh, but yes, we will make that a project. We will get your newsletters and we will put them into the Long Island room. Um, and then we can think about just sort of doing some oral interviews of some of the older folks, you know, work with Definitely. Queen's Library and the Memory Project and so on. So they'll know we were here. They'll be like, only Marie Ryland lived in that house on the corner. <laughs> and in her window, there was a model of her own home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, everyone talks about reason. the house that has a house. That's right. House. That's right. Because she <laughs> lights it up at night and yeah. it's beautiful, you know. <laughs> when you decorate your house for Halloween, do you decorate the model as well? I, I don't decorate the outside. I only decorate the inside. Okay, all right. That's yeah, I decorate that. Yes. Okay. Well, wow. Christmas also. You okay. Know that. <laughs> 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 well, guys, this has been amazing. Was there anything that I really should have asked you that we didn't get to talk about today? Mm. Not really. I think we covered everything. It's mm. a lot of information that probably will translate to. <laughs> you look. You need to ask these women how they're able to just keep looking as beautiful as they're oh, looking so nice. at this. He's like so what? <laughs> they make me proud to be a fifty-four year old. I'm like, wait a minute now. Baby. <laughs> well, they say the queens have some of the prettiest women. So. Oh, is that what they say? <laughs> Well, guys, thank you. And if you think of anything else that you want to add at any point, okay. um, we can do that in the transcripts or you know shoot me an email or something. We'll we'll add it in there. Thank well, you again so much. I'm just going to ask that each of you state your name again clearly and give your address as well. All right. So let's start with Renee. Uh, do I have to give my address? <laughs> They're not coming well, here. No, we we'll have it. <laughs> but it's just uh, your full name. Renee again. Cheatham Hill, what seventy eighth place? All right. Uh, Greg May is one one four dash seven three one seventy eighth Street. Alney Marie Ryland, 17916, 112th Avenue, Addersley Park. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's all. all there is. All right.